Good morning, everybody. I am Pastor Sue Prey, and I welcome you to Middleburg Heights Community United Church of Christ, where all are welcome. If you are visiting or returning from some time away, please stick around after worship and join us for a time of fellowship. We'd love to connect. As always, please feel free to post your prayer concerns in the chat box, and we'll read those later in the service. A few announcements. This is the fifth Sunday of Lent, and next week is Palm Sunday, which begins our observance of Holy Week. The remembrance of Jesus's procession, in, procession into Jerusalem can be done virtually with the traditional palm branches, which can be picked up outside the church doors beginning tomorrow. Also virtually is our traditional Maundy Thursday service, April 1st, 7.30 p.m., when we'll celebrate Holy Communion. The service will include a series of anointings, so you may wanna have your elements and oil nearby. In this service, we remember by participating in the rituals and recall the story of Jesus's Last Supper. Good Friday will also be via Zoom, 7.30 on April 2nd, as we continue the story of Jesus's passion and death. For Holy Saturday, we invite you to participate in a Stations of the Cross vigil, being created in a socially distanced and safe manner with 10 stations throughout our church building. To ensure safety protocols, we are asking that all participants sign up and also arrive at that time so we can create space between participants. The vigil times are 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. This event is in person only. Please see the link in your good news to sign up for your time. And finally, our Easter celebration will be Sunday, April 4th at 10.30 a.m. Please join us in our virtual worship as we celebrate the resurrection and the new life that is the foundation of our Christian faith. We're excited to announce the return of our cheer parades. With nicer weather, we are once again planning to drive by the homes of friends that we have been missing. The next parade is next Sunday, March 28th at one o'clock. Gather in the church parking lot with your balloons, your signs, your streamers, or whatever you might use for celebration. If you or someone you know would like a parade, email Cheryl, and her email is in the good news. Our kindness campaign continues with our muffin ministry, which were, this were most recently provided to Edna House and Denison United Church of Christ shelter residents. For details on the remaining muffin needs, contact Deb Thompson. And we're, off, we're putting out there an ask for help. Lorraine Nixon is in need of help selling her car. If there is anyone out there willing to offer assistance with this, please contact Vicki. As part of our Kindland Camp project, our Kindland campaign, we are asking acts of kindness to be, kindness to be posted to social media using the hashtag Kindland. You can also pick up your Kindland signs at the church building. Adult spiritual formation continues. The Sunday morning group will take a short break on Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday, but will resume the following week with a study of 1 Corinthians. Our Monday evening group that is currently studying the last week of Jesus with the book by Borg and Crossan will conclude during Holy Week but by popular demand, we're gonna continue a Monday evening option, which will be the same study as the Sunday morning. And now friends, on this holy day, let us be in an attitude of worship as we offer thanks, sing, pray, and remember the promises of God. Let us listen to the prelude.
Change. For many, this word provokes, creates tension, increases anxiety. But for others, change means opportunity and challenge. As Christians, we are called to be new, to be transformed, to be recreated. And as awesome as this might sound, it involves change, starting over, giving up the familiar and taking on something new. Our scripture today reminds us that God is always with us. God pledges to be with us. We can start over. We can be reformed. It is offered as a comfort, but it is also a challenge that as Christians, we need to be on the lookout for ways to be different, to be better, to be reformed again and again. It is how we honor God. It is how we follow Jesus. God is Every week is a new week, another chance to say, Here I am, use me. Every day is a new day, another chance to say, Thank you for yesterday, thank you for tomorrow. Every hour is a new hour, another chance to say, Again and again, make me new. We do not come to this place to stay the same. We come to this place to be changed. So let us worship holy God who created yesterday, will create tomorrow, and even now is creating something new. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Amen. Amen. In the Gospel of John, a group of Greek people approach the disciples and say, we would like to see Jesus. It's a brief and beautiful moment that the text doesn't spend a lot of time on, and yet it always catches my eye. It catches my eye because the phrase, I want to see Jesus, feels like it should be my constant prayer. Help me see Jesus. I'd like to see Jesus. Bring me closer to Jesus. 
In the prayer of confession, we take a moment to recognize how much space exists between us and those words, trusting that even when we forget to seek out God, God is seeking us out. So join me in the prayer of confession today as we take one step closer to the divine. Gracious God, we want to see you. We want to be known as the people who looked for Jesus. But not only that, we want to be people who have your covenant written on our hearts. Why do we feel so far away from that at times? What went wrong? Where did we lose our way? Could you, would you, once again, write on our fragile hearts? We would be so grateful. Amen. Friends, despite our wonderings, despite our distractions, despite wrong turns time and time again, we are known and loved by God. Like a lighthouse keeper by the sea, God will never stop waving us home. So hear and believe the good news of the gospel. Our fragile bones are held by the great creator. Our fragile hearts are loved by the great creator. Our tender spirits are forgiven by the great creator. Today is a new day. Again and again, we are forgiven. Again and again, we are reformed. Thanks be to God. Amen. Holy God, scripture tells us that your word is written on our hearts, but we struggle to hear it. Is it possible that we have covered up your words with our own self-narratives? Is it possible that we have erased your truth to write our own? Is it possible that we have forgotten your words entirely? Take us back to the beginning. Remove the self-talk that distracts. Clear away the cobwebs of doubt. Show us how to look inside ourselves for your truth, and then write on our hearts once more. We are listening. We are hopeful. We are here. Speak now. Amen. The Old Testament reading is Jeremiah 31, 31. The book of Jeremiah is dominated by doom and gloom condemning the people of Judah for their sin and announcing the imminent destruction of the nation and their exile to Babylon that would occur in 587 BCE. But in the midst of these dark texts, we find this short cluster of uplifting promise oracles offering hope for restoration. There will be darkness, but following the darkness, there will be change, light, and renewal. Hear the words of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. 
I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. God is still speaking. Thanks be to God. The gospel we're reading this week is John 12, 20 through 33. The week Jesus was crucified was a turbulent week in Jerusalem. Thousands of Jews made the pilgrimage to Jerusalem for the festival of Passover. And in the midst of this activity and the crowded streets, Jesus made his protest march into the city. And he continued to attract attention by challenging the temple authorities. And he also challenged many in the crowds by speaking of death, change, transformation. To follow Jesus, one must give up the life they know, a life of familiarity and comfort, and accept a new life, one of servanthood. And in doing that, we'll honor God. Hear the words from the Gospel of John. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsheda in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. God is still speaking. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May my words and my thoughts be acceptable to you, my God, my strength, and my redeemer. Amen. Well, Jim Longsworth is a tough act to follow. We chatted during the week before his sermon last week and talked about how impactful storytelling is. And I thought about that. I've never thought of myself as a storyteller and I'm especially not one to tell stories about my own life, partly because I am by nature an introvert and not inclined to share, partly because there's a risk in telling one's story it creates a vulnerability, and I don't like that. But mostly because I'm not sure which story I would tell. Because it seems that every 10 or 15 years or so, my life has changed. And not a gradual transition into a new phase of life, but more of the abrupt pull the carpet out from underneath me kind of change. Changes that required relocation, ending relationships, 
beginning relationships, grief, isolation, starting over. Some changes I initiated. Some were a response to or a result of a difficult situation. Some changes were joy-filled, but others not so much. So I know about change. But we all know about change. As part of life, we all grow, evolve, ride out life's events, joys, challenges, pitfalls, and disappointments. We deal with health changes and relationship changes. In this past year, we have all had to adapt to a rather abrupt change from the pandemic that affected all aspects of our lives. It affected how we worship and how we engage with each other, but we adapted, we changed. We gave up a lot, but we learned and evolved and found new ways to be present with each other. We all have our own stories about our pandemic experiences. In our gospel reading today, Jesus, in talking about his death, also offers the confusing story about the grain of wheat needing to die to become something greater. He was telling the story of his own death and resurrection, which folks were still not really understanding. But he was also telling the people that their lives must change in order to follow Jesus and serve humanity. And to follow and serve honors God. Well, that was hard to swallow. Sure, the disciples had given up a lot to follow Jesus, but the people in the crowd, all those Jewish folks who had trekked for miles to come to the temple for Passover, Jesus wanted them to change. But what about Jewish law and tradition and rituals? What about their homes and families and jobs? What exactly was Jesus asking them to change? Well, in reading the story, I, I can almost feel the anxiety growing in the crowd. It's, it's palpable because change evokes anxiety, right? I'm sure we can all remember those early months in the pandemic when we finally realized this was not going away anytime soon. And we were all coming to grips with our isolation and restrictions. People don't like to alter their lives, their routines. They wanna stick with what we know. Every year, those Jewish folks walk that same road at the same time to come to that same feast with those same vendors and those same people every year. Then they would go home on those same roads and return to their same familiar lives. It was just how they expected life to go on. And I suspect that God perceived that the message of Jesus was evoking some concern and some skepticism because that voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. Whoa. That voice was for the benefit of the crowd, just in case they were getting ready to move along. Jesus calls us to be changed, to be transformed, to be reformed. We must serve in order to follow, but how we serve, who we serve, that changes as the world changes. Priorities change, circumstances change, the economy changes, people change. Skill sets change. We need to adapt to new needs. We need to create space for new people and fill in the voids left by those who have moved on. We need to be open to new ways of living into our faith. We need to be open to creating new stories. Many of you are old enough to remember the Jaws movies. Remember those? there are some of the best lines in those movies, like, you're gonna need a bigger boat. Yeah. But one of my favorites that I use a lot is just when you think it was safe to go back in the water. I use that quote when after a period of upheaval, life seems to begin to return to some normalcy and then something happens. You know that time when the construction ends and you can return to your preferred path to work only to be met with a detour. Or when you just expected life to return to a routine after a period of chaos, only it really doesn't. 
just as you were settling in, getting comfortable with the sameness, something changes. That's when I say, just when you think it was safe to go back in the water. What it suggests is we are all about change. Sameness and routine are actually the outliers. Jesus doesn't want us to get comfortable. I don't expect that Jesus would even understand how we do church today. He was not an indoor meeting kind of person. Of course, he didn't have to endure Cleveland winners. We are called to be something different, something better, to continue to reinvent ourselves for the good of humanity and creation and for the glory of God. There's no sitting still, becoming complacent, or getting comfortable. Before I started this trek with seminary, after retiring from a professional life, I had created this great space in my house for sewing, investing in some wonderful machines, some tools and fabric and all the accoutrements. I started working part-time at a quilt shop and was thinking, yes, this is what I'm going to do. I will sew and I will read and I will walk my dogs and work part-time. If I were to tell you my story about that time in my life, it would have been about what machine I was using, what quilt I was working on, what thread I was auditioning. I would have been helping with fabric, fabric selection and color coordination, but that wasn't the story God intended me to tell, at least for very long. There was more to my story, a new chapter. I was not going to be allowed to get comfortable hiding in my sewing room. And so it is with all of us. As we consider our new life post pandemic, we cannot think about returning to those same routines and practices and habits. Oh, there's some things that will be the same. There are of course those cherished rituals and gatherings, but there's also more. We need to imagine what else we might be how else we can be followers? How can we, we be reformed? And this won't be the last time. I've heard many of your stories about this church, about the changes you've all been through, about how each time something new and wonderful emerged. So just when you think it's safe to go back in the water, it's time to create a new story. I'll tell you another story. I was reminded of this as I met with so many of you and heard of the years long relationships you have formed in this congregation, of the years long marriages that are being celebrated, the many ways this congregation has served and grown and changed, the long held memories. It made me pause and think, is there someone in my life who knows all my stories? Because each time my life changed, it was like a book closing and a new one opening. There were few of any connecting threads. That space between books was always a bit treacherous, but the new book was always life-giving and energizing. I just had to be courage courageous enough to take the leap. So each time I started over, it was between me and God, and each time I was held and supported. God put people in my path who were there to catch me and guide me and push me along. I just had to trust, have vision, keep moving forward. Jeremiah offers the reassurance that God will write the new covenant on our hearts. We will be God's people. We will be guided, held, and supported. We will be restored. There is hope for being made new again and again change happens. We can be transformed. We can become something even greater. This is how we honor God. Very soon, as more and more of us receive vaccinations, we will be contemplating making changes in how we worship and how we interact. We will certainly not be returning to the same world we left. So we must consider what is different how we are different and how we can respond and adapt. But we also have an opportunity. 
This is a time to imagine new ways of being faithful people in the world. We might look at new ways to involve more people in our journey. We might seek out new people with whom to engage or support. We might look at new ways of worshiping, of celebrating, of being in fellowship. We might think of how we can create more space for God. This. This is a time of change. We are in it, like it or not. And what we do with this time, how we use this opportunity, is up to us. Very soon, you will all be hearing about the NOAA project. This project will offer some time and space to discern who we are and what we value. We will have a chance to share our ideas about our faith community and how we might emerge from this time of pandemic. This is our opportunity to be the new growth of wheat that Jesus was talking about. This is our time to embrace some change. So we will move into this new normal with the reassurance of Jeremiah that God is with us. And again and again, as we embrace change, let us use this time to be intentional as to how we will be recreated because it is by becoming something better, something reformed, that we honor God. And let all the people say, amen. Please join me in this affirmation of faith. We believe that flowers need the rain, that humans need community, that bodies need rest. We believe that hearts need connection, that mornings need sunrise, and that seasons need change. We believe that grief needs space, that change needs time, that love needs security. We believe that pain needs art, that joy needs company and that our spirits need God. Again and again, our spirits need God. Fortunately for us, we trust that God is here. God is at work in our lives. God is a lighthouse keeper that never gives up. Thanks be to God, amen.
Our prayer concerns today, we offer continued prayers for Rick Sazma and his daughters after we celebrated Kathy's life with a memorial service yesterday. Also continuing prayers for Ava Sefcek following knee replacement surgery, now at home and beginning physical therapy. Prayers for Sky Nye following her bone surgery last Monday. She's doing very well and continued prayers for Pam Wolf following her mother's passing last week. We pray for the Lehman family as both Nancy and John Allison's parents are dealing with health concerns and continued prayers for Alan Blessinger, Dave Perkins, Don and Peg Knievy and Marianne Ivanchik's sister and brother-in-law. Jared, are there any prayer concerns from the chat? Uh, yes, there are. Starting with uh, Flo asks for prayers for her dear friend, Gloria. Gloria lost her husband after his year long battle with ALS. She asks for prayers for her and her family. Glenn and, Re uh, and Roberta have two prayer requests. They ask for prayers for their friend, Steve, who is undergoing chemotherapy for cancer. And also prayers for Sue. Sue worked with Glenn and she passed away suddenly this past Tuesday. Sandy shares a joy that her mom celebrated her 92nd birthday on Thursday. And Sandy and her sister were allowed to visit her for the first time since September. And Connie asked for our continued prayers for Eva Sepsik. She's home and doing well, but still in pain after the surgery. They also asked for prayers for their mother, Joyce. Joyce has been moved to the Altenheim Nursing Home in Strongsville. Michelle is asking for prayers for peace of mind as uh, for the next six months as her coursework is um, increasing, gearing up to, uh, for graduation in May. And I believe that's it from the, the, the prayer requests. Yep. Thank you, Jared. Let us hold all those mentioned in our hearts as we continue in our time of prayer. Again this week, let us take a moment and use artwork as a focus for contemplation and prayer. In the first work by Hannah Garrity entitled, Drawn to Love, the voice of God is portrayed in the clouds and the wheat grows beyond the borders bringing forth a standard of daring love. In the second image, artist Lauren Wright Pattis Patterson uses images of a heart surrounded by covenantal imagery to represent how God continues to seek reconciliation, pour out grace and hold us. Hold us. I ask you to get comfortable and breathe deeply as you gaze upon these images. Imagine placing yourself in the scene. What do you see? How do you feel? Get quiet and still, offering a silent or spoken prayer to God, remembering those we have mentioned and those who remain unnamed in your heart. After this time of reflection and prayer, I'll share another prayer poem, this time written by Reverend Sarah R. Let us be in a time of silent reflection.
I can feel change inside of me. It's a slow burn. Change usually starts out hot, defensive and angry. A self-righteous blanket of I am right and here's why. I wrap it around my shoulders like a barricade. I fight the temptation to lean forward, to play the challenger, to argue with confidence. But in time, almost always, the heat fades. The air leaves the balloon. The audacity of it all starts to wear off. And eventually, I am left with, all I am left with is myself and a big open sky. It's colder here. It's quieter. I can hear my thoughts. And in this big wide openness, I'm able to say out loud, maybe I wasn't right. Maybe I need to learn. Maybe it's time for change. Maybe that's okay. And if I'm quiet, and if I'm paying attention, I can usually hear God whisper inside of me, good work, my child. Now keep digging. Let us join in the prayer of our Savior. Our creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespassed against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. For our time of offering, we will have a stewardship moment featuring our two youth ministry interns, Helena Trilianza and Austin Nye. Both are high school juniors, Helena at North Royalton and Austin at Strongsville. We've been blessed by their leadership among our youth for the past two years. And this morning, we're excited to hear their personal testimony about what the church means to them. Helena, I think you offered to go first. Yeah, hi, uh, I'm Helena. And as an intern, I really enjoyed the opportunity to work with the younger kids to help in their faith formation. I enjoyed the various projects that we have done like trunk or treat, teeter-totter marathon, and making Thanksgiving bags at Church Street Ministries. These past two years have been impactful not only on me, but I believe the youth as well. I have been able to explore my faith while helping others explore theirs. While some of my favorite memories were from in-person church, I believe that as a team, we pulled off some pretty amazing events during the pandemic. I want to also say thank you to all the Sunday school teachers and the coordinators for all of their hard work. We appreciate you. Thanks, Helena. Austin? Hello, I'm Austin. I'm an intern at the church and a youth leader. Uh, I enjoyed working with Helena as a youth leader. Uh, this has been very rewarding, taking on the stewardship role. Some highlights I recall include uh, our retreat to uh, the Winter Green Cabin with the youth group. Uh, another one is making breakfast at the church before uh, quarantine and all of that. Uh, another is working at uh, Church Street Ministries, uh, helping them organize canned goods or making care packages for veterans. Uh, worship Sundays where we made cards for church members in need of emotional support or the Teeter Totter Marathon is the big one that I have participated in for over the past several years. Thank you, Helena and Austin. Let us to continue to keep them in our prayers as they continue to grow their gifts and on their amazing spiritual journey. Now let us join in our closing hymn, The Bulb There Is a Flower. Oh, 
As you leave this space, may your mouth speak of God's goodness. May your arms hold those in need. May your feet walk toward justice. May your heart trust its worth. May your soul dance in God's grace. And may this be your rhythm again and again and again until God's promised day. In the name of the lover, the beloved, and love itself. Go with courage, go with heart, go in peace. Amen.